Hello! We've made it on to lesson number three of functions. This one is looking at composite functions. So what is meant by a composite function? Well, if you remember back to previous years, you looked at composite shapes, such as this one here. And a composite shape is a shape that's made up of two or more familiar shapes. So this one here, you've obviously got your uh, rectangle and then the triangle on top. So a composite function is a function that's made up of more than one function. So a composite function is a function that combines more than one function. Say what? I know. So example one. If f of x equals 3x add 7 and another function g of x equals 5x work out two examples a f of g of 7 let's just do this one first so the way you want to do this what it means is that you're wanting to work out the f of g of 7 whenever you work out as a composite function you always want to start in the middle so we want to start off work start off working out the g of 7 so ignore the f of part and just work out the g of 7 so to do that you want to think right well the g of x is 5x so the g of 7 would be we're replacing x with 7 so replace x with 7 so we've got 5 times 7 which is 35 so now we know that this g of 7 is 35 so we can then say that the g that the f of g of 7 just works out to be the f of 35 which means we're now looking at this function with f so we're looking at this function here and we're replacing x with 35 so instead of 3x we'd have 3 times 35 add 7 working that out 3 times 35 will give us 105 add 7 gives us 112 and that would then be the f of g of 7 Another example, so the g of f of 3. First thing again, we want to start in the middle and we want to work out the f of 3. So we're looking at function f of x, that's 3x plus 7. So f of 3, we're replacing x with 3. So we've got the f of 3 would be 3 times 3, add 7, which is 9 add 7, which is obviously 16. Once we've worked out f of 3, well, we now know this part is 16 so we want to work out the g of 16 so the next part here the g of the f of 3 which is the question just becomes the g of 16 doing that we're wanting to look at function g so it's this one here that we're looking at and we want to work out the g of 16 so replace x with 16 so it's 5 times 16 which will work out to be 80 and that would be your answer let's work out another one Example 2. If f of x equals x minus 2 and g of x equals x squared, find f of g of x. So to do this, you want to think, right, well, in this function f, I want to put in the g of x. So g of x works out as x squared. Again, you're kind of doing the same thing as before. You're starting with the middle. So g of x is x squared. You can't work out any numbers because you're not asked to work out the g of 2 or g of 3 or anything like that. g of x is x squared, which means then you're wanting to work out the f of x squared because that's what g of x is. So if you want to work out f of x squared, we're looking at function f. So this is the one we're looking at now, and we're thinking we're replacing x with x squared. So over here, replace x with x squared. So we'd have an x squared minus 2. We can't do anything with that, so we would just leave it as x squared minus 2. Next one, g of f of x. So g of f of x, this one time again, we're thinking of the middle. So we've got f of x. f of x is x take 2. You cannot simplify x take away 2, so it just becomes the g of x take away 2. So in function g, we're thinking we're replacing x with x minus 2. So on the right-hand side, replace x with x minus 2. So we've got x minus 2 all squared. You could multiply out the brackets. That just means times it by itself. And that would give us x squared take 4x plus 4. Let's try another couple. You could also work out the f of f of x and the g of 
g of x. So to do that, f of f of x, once again, you want to start in the middle with f of x. So f of x is up here. That's x take away 2. You cannot simplify x take away 2, so we just want the f of x take away 2. So we're looking at function f. In this function f, we're wanting to replace x with x take away 2. So on the right hand side, replace x with x take away 2. So we've got x take away 2, take away 2. Because we're replacing this x with x take away 2, so it's x take away 2. And then you've still got that take away 2. From there, when you sub in, you're best to put brackets around it, but you could easily just get rid of the brackets here, leaving you with x take away 2, take away 2, which is just x take away 4. And that would be your answer for that one. And last but not least, g of g of x. So in function g, what colour shall I go for? Let's go for red. So start in the middle, we've got g of x. g of x is x squared. You cannot simplify that, so it stays as x squared. So you can replace g of x with x squared. So we want the g of x squared. So in function g, this one up here, we're replacing x with x squared. So instead of x squared, we would have x squared squared. Kind of blows your mind. So you've got x squared, all squared. If you multiply um, x squared by x squared, you would end up with x to the power of 4. And that would be your answer for that one. Let's do one more. Example 3. For this one, let's say f of x equals 2x plus 3. So what is h of x if h of x equals the f of x over x plus 1? So this one here, it probably looks a bit confusing. It's giving us f of x. It's asking us what h of x is, but it's telling us that h of x is the f of x over x plus 1. Which means then that h of x is f of x over x plus 1. So that is what we start off with. So the way we do this is you want to think in function f, I want to input x over x plus 1. So I'm replacing the x with x over x plus 1. So here I'm replacing the x with x over x plus 1. So doing that, I'd have 2 times x over x plus 1, and then plus 3 would stay as it is. To simplify this, well, treat the 2 just as a whole number, but then imagine it as over 1. So you've got a fraction times a fraction. So 2 times x gives us 2x, and then 1 times the x add 1 will just give us 2x over x add 1, and plus 3 would stay as plus 3. A lot of the time, you'll be asked to write that as a single fraction. So rather than have a fraction plus a number, you could write it a different way. So to do that, what you want to think is, right, well, in order to add, I need two fractions. So you can write 3 as 3 over 1. But to add fractions, you need the denominators the same. So to do that, you want to think, right, well, I want an x plus 1 on the right hand side as well. So I need an x plus 1. And to get that, what you can do is you can multiply the top and the bottom, the numerator and denominator, by x plus 1. So doing that will give us 2x over x plus 1. That has not changed. Plus 3 and then multiply the numerator and denominator by x plus 1. Doing that, really what you could do is you could cancel them out so we're left with 3. So we've not really changed that. Okay, but Obviously, don't cancel it now, or you're just going to be going back the way. From here, to add fractions, the denominator is the same, so you can add the numerators. So we'd have the 2x plus 3 times x plus 1. Doing that, well, just multiply out the brackets at the top. So we've got 2x plus 3x plus 3 over x plus 1. And then, if you look at the numerator, you've got 2x add 3x, which is 5x add 3 over x plus 1. That is it written as a single fraction and it looks a lot better than this where you've got a fraction plus or minus something. That is how you would do that one. Give these a shot. It's composite functions. You're putting one function into another function. Try the questions in the book. Give it your best shot and if you need uh, help just yell.